Hi there, I'm Dr. Carol, and I'm so glad you've joined me today. As an OBGYN physician, Christian minister, author, and speaker, I love answering questions. And one that I get asked about so often has to do with women, their hormones, and their mental health. So how can you, as a believer, live in a way that honors God and respond to other people in a good way, even on your hormonal days? I want to share with you this teaching I recorded recently where I talk about the impact of hormones on a woman's mental health. And then I share with you seven specific steps that will allow you to take control of your hormones rather than letting your hormones manage you. I hope you enjoy. The topic of women, their hormones, and their mental health is one of the top questions I get asked about. I've been helping women with these issues for over 20 years, and I want to help you today. I can think of the young mother who I cared for not long ago, who was struggling with PMS so desperately that she was actually in the hospital on two separate occasions because she just couldn't function any other way. I can think of the husband who sent me a letter not long ago after his wife had delivered their second baby. She was struggling with postpartum depression so badly and he was worried about her ability to survive. I can think of the well-functioning executive who saw me right at the time she was going through menopause. She was in danger of losing her job because her judgment and ability to think clearly were so much less at that time in her life and she didn't know what else to do. All these times in a woman's life, hormones have gotten a very bad reputation. But there's something very general and specific at the same time. One thing that is common among all these periods of life, and that is that hormones are changing. Many women have come to me asking to measure their hormone levels to see whether they have PMS or some other hormone-related condition. But it's not the amount of a specific hormone that your brain or uh, many other areas in your body are sensitive to. It's the changes in those levels of hormones that your brain doesn't like. Your brain has receptors on the neurons, those little brain cells that pull in hormones from your bloodstream. Those receptors act like magnets and grab onto estrogen, progesterone, and other hormones. Once those hormones are inside brain cells, those brain cells functioning is altered in all kinds of ways. Your brain gets used to a specific level of those hormones, and when that level changes, your brain reacts in all kinds of difficult ways. Many women are familiar with how difficult PMS or premenstrual syndrome can be. That's the period for a few days to maybe 10 days just before your period when your hormones are changing rapidly. Sometimes those changes are dramatic even hour to hour and certainly day to day. Your brain reacts to those changes by sometimes crying more easily, being more irritable, being less able to function. You feel crazy, and yes, your man, it's probably certain that you're crazy. Another time when hormones are changing is right after the birth of the baby. During pregnancy, the placenta has been creating large amounts of estrogen, progesterone, and other hormones. When the baby's born and that placenta is gone, those hormones plummet and your brain isn't ready for that dramatic of a change. The third time during a woman's life when this is an issue is during menopause. During the years just prior to menopause, the normal hormone fluctuations usually become much more dramatic. The highs are higher and the lows are lower. Then when menopause does come, there's no more progesterone at all, and the amount of estrogen present is just a fraction of, it was, of what it was earlier. Your brain probably doesn't like all those hormone changes, and it can be easy to feel like a victim. You want to cry more easily, you're more irritable, what may have just felt like normal stress during other periods of your life now just feels totally impossible to deal with. If you're a man who loves a woman going through some of these changes, some tender loving care is of course a good idea, and we appreciate that. But it's also okay to let us women know how we're coming across at those times and to hold us accountable for our behavior. There's one message I want you to hear from today, and that is you are not 
a victim to your hormones. Even if you feel like those hormones are controlling you, you don't have to let them. You can become the master of your hormones. And here, as promised, are those seven specific steps that will help you be a master to your hormones. So here we go. You ready? Step number one, choose to be in charge. I think this is the most important step of all. If you see yourself as a victim, you probably will continue to act in that way. Every time your hormones go up or down and your brain feels a little bit off, you'll feel like something else, your hormones, is controlling you. On the other hand, if you choose to take charge, you may have to make some changes. You may have to get some extra help. You may have to do some things different in your lifestyle. You may have to think more sternly about yourself than you ever have before and really take charge. But if you decide to do exactly that, you can learn to be the master of your hormones. And I hope you take this first step. Choose to be in charge. Step number two, get regular physical exercise. Remember that study I talked to you about a little earlier in the program? It talked about how powerfully physical activity improved the mental functioning of women going through menopause. They had better memory and better cognitive functioning, as well as just felt better. The same goes for women who have just had a baby and also for women going through PMS. There's actually some research showing that women going through PMS may have most of their symptoms gone if they get regular physical exercise. That may not be the only thing that you have to change, but it will be more powerful than you think. Step number three, feed your body well. Your brain may be a lot less able to handle all that processed food during times when you're going through hormonal changes than it is at other times. Your brain needs healthy protein. It needs healthy fats like are found in avocados and nuts. It needs phytonutrients found in fruits and vegetables. If you stay away from the processed food, your brain will have the fuel it needs to weather those difficult times. Step number four, feed your mind well. Many of us have heard a lot about how important it is to feed our body well, but your mind needs healthy food just as much. Your mind needs stimulation, it needs rest, it needs good quality input. Pay attention to the media that you allow into your mind. Is it uplifting? Pay attention to the people that you're around and the kinds of messages you allow them to speak into your life. And I don't think there's any better way to feed your mind than in God's Word. Spend time daily letting God's Word nurture your soul through your mind. Spend some time outdoors in God's nature. Spend some time around the works that He has built and Uh, lake, trees, birds, flowers, that can nurture your soul. Step number five, choose supplements wisely. Now this is an area where there's a lot of controversy, but I'll tell you some things that I tell my patients. For PMS, evening primrose oil at 1500 milligrams a day may be helpful. A calcium and magnesium supplement can also help some women going through PMS. For postpartum depression, St. John's wort may be very helpful. That is if you're not breastfeeding. For women going through menopause, St. John's wort has also been helpful for women who are struggling with the anxiety and depression aspects of menopause in particular. Some have also found that combining St. John's wort with black cohosh may be especially helpful. You do need to watch out for liver problems if you use black cohosh. Step number six, use your support system. Now we talked at the beginning here about taking charge of your own health. We're not talking about having others do things for you that you need to do for yourself, but God didn't build us to go through life alone. Be honest with your girlfriends, your boss, 
your friends, and even your husband about the things that you're going through. If you need some extra tender loving care, if you need some extra sleep or some extra time with your friends, be honest about that. And especially with your husband, he can't read your mind. So ask for what you need and then be grateful for what he or what anyone else is able to give you. And step number seven, nurture your spiritual life. You know, some of us have felt like it would be nice if we could just put in a prayer and God would magically fix our problems. But it doesn't usually work that way. Much more than just dealing with your momentary comfort, God is interested in a relationship with you. And the best way to develop that relationship is to invest in your spiritual life every day. Spend time reading God's Word. Pray regularly. Not some King James English sounding prayers, but prayers from your heart with tears if necessary. Spend time around other Christians who are growing in their walk with God and see what they're doing and learn from them. Investing daily in that kind of a relationship with God will give you the resilience you need to weather those difficult times and will help you live that fully alive life that Jesus came to give us, even on your hormonal days. I hope these seven steps are helpful, and I'm going to keep praying that you make use of these and take charge of not only your hormones, but all the areas of your health that God has given you. I hope you enjoyed these seven specific steps to mastering your hormones. If you found this meaningful, I want to encourage you to get my new book, Dr. Carol's Guide to Women's Health. There's several chapters in here that speak exactly to the kinds of things I just shared with you, but in a whole lot more depth. I have a chapter here on menopause, specifically all the hormonal and other changes that happen during menopause. I have a whole chapter here on choosing supplements, and I know many of you who are struggling with mental health issues and hormones are interested in that. I talk about what to look out for and how to make appropriate choices. I talk about managing your stress well. I talk about a woman's troubled mind and ways to deal with that. And then I talk about healthy spirituality. This book, Dr. Carol's Guide to Women's Health, brings together medical science, my practical experience, and a faith perspective. And I hope you'll get your copy today. I pray God's richest blessing on you. If you have a question that you'd like me to address, just go to the website that I list on your screen right now, our Contact Us page, and send me a question or a comment. I'll be sure to respond to you individually, and I may be able to answer your question on a video just like this to help other people just like you. Until next time, may God richly bless you. Now go and live well.